What's going on everybody? Jeremy back again with another exploration. So today we're in Southern Georgia and we're about to explore this amazing mansion that's buried in the woods. This place has more antiques than probably any mansion I've ever seen in the United States. It's about 7 a.m., the sun's about to rise and then we're gonna get into the exploration. But before that, I wanna remind you guys, if you enjoy my content, leave me a like, subscribe to my channel, it greatly helps me out. And without further ado, let's get into the horrific story of why this place is abandoned. I bet you're expecting this big cinematic intro with voiceover, but today we're gonna to do something a little different from my other videos because this place is so crazy, I feel like I need to tell you in person. Check this out. One night in 1982, rural Georgia police received a disturbing 911 call from a mother in panic. Her 16-year-old son, Thomas, had just been brutally stabbed to death while he was asleep. When Georgia dispatch showed up to the grisly scene, they discovered the teenager had been murdered by his 14-year-old sister, Rachel, and she was nowhere to be found. They later found out that Rachel didn't only intend on killing her brother that night, she also had plans on killing her parents, but due to the blood curdling screams of her brother as he was being stabbed to death, she panicked, dropped the knife, and escaped out the back door and into the woods. According to interviews with Rachel's siblings, she was a very troubled kid from an early age. She didn't really have any friends and she spent all of her time in her room alone. But as she got older, Rachel became more and more reclusive and it was around this time she developed a fascination with satanic worship and began practicing satanic rituals in her bedroom right next to Thomas's room. And to this day, Rachel's parents still blame the murder solely on her satanic practices. However, the plot to the story gets even thicker. Check this out. In later interviews with two of Rachel's siblings, they introduce new details to the story that could paint a much broader picture of what might have truly been going on in that household. They claim that from the age of seven, Rachel, along with her younger sister, was being molested and abused by Thomas. But that's not all. Allegedly, her father had also been molesting the two young girls. Her father, of course, denies these claims and states that the devil made Rachel do it and perhaps, you know, not years of sexual, emotional, and physical torment Rachel had to endure before she finally had enough and devised a plan to kill her brother and her parents. And during the very brief investigation and court proceedings, Rachel's story matched up perfectly with what her two siblings claimed. Nevertheless, she was given a very harsh sentencing of 28 years in a mental facility in Florida. Mind you, this is during the 1980s, in the very height of the fear of satanic ritualism, piggybacking off the late 60s Manson murders, stranger danger sensationalism, and the media's portrayal of widespread ritualistic murders that for the most part didn't even have any evidence to go on. And it's well documented, this era in our history had an impact on how court systems were ruling certain cases. Basically, what I'm saying is this story is crazy, and I feel like only one perspective has been told. Now, I want you guys to know that I'm not claiming or denying any stance that I have on this. I'm just plain devil's advocate. Oh, and about the mansion, apparently after the murder, the family moved pretty far from the small Georgia town and they never looked back. But here is another kicker. They left everything inside the home and they didn't sell it either. So, now that you know the full story, it's now time we go inside this mansion and explore every inch of it. See you in there. All right, so here we are, right here in the front yard of this place. And look how buried this house is behind all this brush. And mind you, this is a mansion and you can't even see it. Let's go around to this side. Maybe you'll get a better idea of how big it is from the outside. You can barely see the wraparound porch from right here. And this house keeps going further and further back. And you can really get an idea of how old this place is 
judging by the materials used in those shutters. It's a very, very old house. Just right here, hidden in these woods. Okay, I say we go on ahead and just go inside and not waste any more time out here. Oh man, very thick bushes. I'm having to crouch pretty low just to go under all these thorns. And here is the front porch. You can see how rotted the steps are. This place has been abandoned for a very long time. I love how the light comes in on it. And you got that classic seafoam green. And look above us. So fun fact, they used to paint the underside of the porches green and blue because it was a superstition that if you painted it that color, it would ward off evil spirits, funny enough. And look at this door, look at all these cobwebs, all this beautiful detail in the door. Whew, okay, here we go. Oh my God, guys, already, I can tell this place is going to be absolutely full of antiques as we're seeing so much of it by the door already. And look at this beautiful staircase and this woodwork that's on it. All these details in the wood, all the way up the stairs. And it looks like it's probably lining the walls here too. We can already see a really beautiful old couch, very Victorian, very bold colors. Oh, and look at this. It's a letter. There's already signs of love, signs of life in this place. And look at this beautiful detail all on this wall and this staircase going up it as well. It's amazing. Whoa, look at all of this. This room is completely full of furniture. I feel like for an antique salvage, this place is probably a gold mine. I wonder what's under this plastic. Definitely a Victorian sofa. Like a little display cabinet. Holy cow, guys, there's so much antiques in this place. Oh, and look at this artwork up above. It's like a scene with a little boy standing out next to a barn with a horse and carriage. It's beautiful. Guys, there are priceless antiques in this place. Just sitting, waiting for nature to reclaim it. So if this room wasn't so full of antiques, I would say it would be a complete time capsule room. Man, look at this red velvet sofa. And it looks like it's in immaculate condition. I mean, there's no telling how much money's worth of antiques is just sitting in here collecting dust. Let's go further along. So I know we just started this exploration, but already my mind is being absolutely blown by all the stuff that we're finding in here. And look at this. Another room full of antiques. Look at this beautiful mantle over here. And a painting of a boy up above. So this was definitely a bedroom because right here is the bed. And look at this headboard. 
This looks like something you would see in Europe. And a beautiful dresser. All of this stuff is in great condition too. For now at least. Looks like we have a bathroom. And look at this. Speaking of Europe, this looks like something straight out of Europe. It's very Victorian. Oh my God, look at this. This is beautiful. And this is painted. This isn't a print. This is hand painted on this piece. And look at these golden details here. Holy cow, there's no telling how much money's worth. Just this piece is. We have a claw foot tub over here in the corner. A pretty small tub, but a claw foot tub nonetheless. Oh, and I just noticed there's carpet, like a floral carpet in this bathroom. Really weird when you think about it. Man, I am blown away at how much stuff we're already seeing. Just completely left behind. Okay, let's go across the hall here to this other room that's also, yet again, completely full of antiques. Oh, and look at this floral chair. That's so cool. And this Singer sewing machine cabinet, look at this. In immaculate condition with all this beautiful detail. These little drawers. They seem to be all empty. This is amazing, guys. There's a lot of wicker furniture in here, too. Man, it just looks like this was a... It looks like a flea market in here. Someone was definitely hoarding antiques. Oh, and here's a sofa to match the chair that we just saw. And this sofa looks like it's in perfect condition. That sofa is so cool. It looks like all of this stuff is just sitting and it looks like it was staged as if they were gonna come back and get it, but they never did. What do you guys think? And here's the other view of this room that we were in a second ago. And look at this beautiful red velvet sofa. I wonder what's under this sheet that's covering this piece. It looks like a bench. Really beautiful. There's just stuff everywhere here, guys. Guess we might as well go around this way. Get a better angle of this mantle and the artwork that's above. And look at this artwork down here. Very European artwork. Lots of beautiful pieces in this house. if there's anything in this drawer here. Like true explorer fashion, we're really crawling over stuff, going through drawers. Oh guys, look at this. It's a TV. Look how old this TV is. It's a Sylvania. Holy cow, this thing is so old. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And it's so beautiful. Look at the wood encasing. Look how you can just open it up. And then when you're done watching TV, you can just hide it in this wood cabinet. Oh gosh, as I'm literally crawling over furniture. Look at this. These beautiful pocket doors. And I wanna point out that I haven't seen a chandelier yet. They're very simple, like country style, like farmhouse light fixtures that are mounted up above. Going 
further along and check this out another tv very old television the brand is called a true tone never heard of that brand gosh all of this old stuff bed frames really cool looking trunk it feels empty and look at this i imagine this was the dining room we have a brick fireplace here and look here next to us cabinet maybe that held silverware at one point it's a very interesting lamp look at this it's a fake flower inside of it i've never seen a lamp like this there's so many one-of-a-kind items in this house makes me wonder if a lot of the stuff here is, was homemade and look at this a bench here on the floor i imagine it probably was pushed up against that wall at one point maybe to hold more people I can imagine all the Thanksgivings that probably happened in this house, all the celebrations. Guys, and check this out. It's a very old American flag, all folded up. And look at this. You can still see how the stars were actually stitched on there. This was handmade. This is incredible. Just sitting in this drawer, being eaten by mice. It's a big, tall mirror up above this piece right here. And check it out. This cabinet that's built into the wall that used to hold China. And you can see here where China sat for years and I imagine maybe a looter or possibly someone from the family eventually came and got it. I can only imagine the china that was there was probably some very rare or expensive pieces. I say this all the time, but it, it truly feels like we're walking through a museum right now and we're seeing like actual artifacts from the past, from someone's life and finding clues as to what it must have been like to live here. So I think the hallway we're walking into right now was actually an addition onto the house. I believe this at one point was probably a porch. You can see here that there was siding and a single pane window that probably looked out onto the porch. And basically they just walled it all in. It's very common in old places like this. It looks like we have the kitchen Wow, and look at this. This table here in the middle is made out of old, old wine barrels. So is the chairs. This is so cool. Very old appliances in here. Very mid-century. Gosh, look at this old sink. It's very utilitarian in here. It's not very fancy, but there's so many appliances in here. I can only imagine that so many meals were cooked here. The people that lived here definitely spent a lot of time around a table. And every single drawer is full of kitchen supplies. cleaning supplies. Huh, and look at this. 
mouth stopper for people who can't keep it shut. And as always, we gotta check the fridge. Kind of a letdown, not gonna lie. Uh, not too, not too disgusting. Kind of disappointing. Oh, and I almost missed this. Check this out. I believe this is an old phone. This is crazy. Look, I, I believe you talk into this. There's a little volume knob and a tuning knob. That is crazy. Oh, and look at this. We got a calendar. And it's dated for February. 1982. It's crazy to think that a place has been sitting abandoned for 40 years like this, and it's still in such great condition. So it looks like we've pretty much seen everything downstairs. So I say we go upstairs where all the bedrooms are. And let's see what it looks like up there. Such a beautiful staircase. All this detail of this wood all the way up to the upstairs. Ooh, we got red carpet here. is so big it looks like it just keeps going and going wow and look at this this is the first bedroom we've seen It's a very like American quilt on the bed. But then like a very like Spanish style artwork hanging on the walls with an anchor. With this, this is so random. And this beautiful velvet lamp that matches the rest of the room and the carpet and the accents on this blue couch. I love how cohesive this room is. Again, more Spanish style artwork hanging on the walls. And this amazing stained glass window on this door. Could you imagine just living in this room? Man, and just to think this is the first bedroom we've seen so far. drawers full of candles that one seems like it is too these old doorknobs pieces to, and parts to the house to make repairs and this very detailed beautiful fireplace Look at this woodwork. I've never seen woodwork like this on a fireplace. This room is quite amazing. And very peculiar artwork hanging above the fireplace as well. Like we got glasses, an hourglass, a letter, ink. We got a horn and a rifle, of course. It's very almost militaristic. Very masculine. It looks like behind this little rocking chair. I'm gonna move this out of the way. 
some kind of small door next to the fireplace. Maybe book storage. No, it's for the vacuum cleaner. Got another claw foot tub here. It's a very small tub. It's almost for like a, it looks like it could be even for a, a kid. It looks like Chinese style artwork here on the walls. Still kind of going along with an equal theme and with a sailor theme as well. We got ships here. Still looks very Chinese. I wonder if um, the people who lived here were very cultured. And look at this, a black dresser. Like a glossy finished black dresser with an anchor. And this towel here with this really cool design. Just everywhere you turn in this house, it's like one of a kind pieces. I know the man was in the oil industry and judging by a lot of the antiques and the stuff I'm finding in this house, I feel like he was also very cultured as well. I say we go out this door and onto the balcony. We're gonna have to be pretty quiet because we don't want to alert the neighbors. Oh, look at this. It's like a day bed, porch swing. Just come out here, read a book, watch the cars go by, out here with a cup of coffee or tea. And guys, look how big this porch is. This is a, definitely a one of a kind house. Very Southern, but also very, very cultured. These lawn chairs are still here. Let's go back inside and explore the rest of the upstairs. So this is going back down the hall. It's a really cool looking clock. And look at this, how this woodwork is lining the walls all upstairs as well. So much attention to detail in this house. how the light comes in and flickers through the curtains like that. Wonder what's in these drawers here. They look pretty empty. Wonder what this is. So this is Martha's old fashioned sauce. Ideal seasoning. Definitely came from the kitchen. We have another bedroom here and randomly a sink in this bedroom with this carpet here. It always baffles me why you would put carpet underneath a sink or anything with a water source. I love these floral curtains, so cool. It's a very tiny bedroom. And we have another bedroom back here. Looks like this was probably set up maybe for family when they came to visit. Very simple room. Look at this hideous mustard carpet. Very 70s, maybe 60s even. I don't feel like this was a regular bedroom. I feel like this room right here was definitely set up to be a guest room. Okay, let's keep going further along. So this stairway right here leads down to where the kitchen is. We're on that end of the house right now. And we're just gonna go all around the perimeter of the upstairs and see everything. Very small bathroom another clawfoot tub. And look how nature is just coming in. 
this bathroom here. And we have another bedroom right here. Whoa, look at this pink. And guys, we just found the daughter's room. I've heard stories about this room and the one right next to hers where her brother lived. And look at this, these upside down crosses that are hanging with these flowers hanging out of them. A very strange artwork up above the bed. Again, very Spanish style artwork. And down here is a very creepy doll. Guys, this right here looks like stab marks. This is definitely stab marks from a knife in this doll. Maybe this was used as a voodoo doll. I know it's very common down south along the Gulf. And you know, for this room to be as dark as it once was, I get questions all the time of, you know, do I feel things? Do I feel paranormal things in houses? And I have to say, I really, I really don't. I don't really get any bad vibes from this room at all, to be quite honest. I think the only bad feelings I get is just from the knowing of who the girl was and what happened here. I don't know what's in these dresser drawers. They're definitely, definitely stuck. Gosh, such a shame. It's old, looks like table linens. Since this dresser is pretty much sandwiched between these two broken windows, it gets a lot of moisture and it's completely warped the wood to where the drawers won't even open. Looks like this room's pretty much cleared out. I have to say, this is probably one of the more empty rooms of the house. Got a closet over here with, what is this stuff? Ew, it's like a black goo that's in here. Almost like molasses, but it's too thin of a liquid to be molasses. Very strange. And I love this art piece over here in the corner before we enter her brother's room, which is here. This is the room he was murdered. such a sad, sad room. And I can only imagine the trauma that this poor boy and this poor girl went through that led to his murdering. And look at this artwork here on the wall. It's of a little girl with black eyes who's sad and stuck out on the rain. The date is 1962. To me, this looks like a fairly wealthy young girl who probably has pretty much everything she can ask for, but she's still unhappy. 
Perhaps maybe she's not getting what she truly needs. Maybe love. And there's another one over here by the same artist in the same year. It's a very similar painting. This girl looks poor. Looks like she's selling newspapers and she's stuck out in the rain. And I imagine this right here is the parents' room, the master bedroom. And look at this. It's in perfect condition. The bed's still made. It's like they left, didn't want to come back for any of their things. Maybe it was too difficult for them to. All this stuff still on the fireplace mantle. And this artwork as well. It's a beautiful fireplace. And a TV over here in the corner. I bet this one was a, a colored TV. Probably one of the, the first of its kind. And check out these floral curtains that matches the sofa. You don't see that too often in the States, let alone in Southern homes. This family is definitely wealthy. And check it out, the bed has that same exact design. And of course you have this hideous lime green carpet. And it looks like there used to be a, a fixture here and someone either took it out or maybe it broke. And this is cool, it's like a little nook, like a little passageway to the balcony. And again, really cool, funky stained glass window on the door. And look over there, there's a sink. Very random spot for a sink. I wonder what's in this dresser here. If there's anything at all. It looks like blankets and sheets around here to shut it and guys look at this it's a photo of a little boy quite possibly the boy who was murdered one single photo and guys look at this there's one single photo and it looks to be the little boy who was murdered here. As I was saying, the heaviness that I feel is knowing the story of what happened in this room. And I wanna point out that the little boy isn't the only victim here. I think it's easy to forget that the little girl must have gone through so much trauma and so much abuse to arrive to a place in her mind that killing her family and her little brother was a good idea. Oftentimes, when we're looking at stories like this, we need to examine the true scene of the original crime, these kids' upbringing. Okay, so it looks like we've pretty much explored this entire mansion, and I just wanna thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this exploration. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Leave me a like, Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And until next time, stay off the beaten path.